out of the peel, so you want to be super, super smooth. So Cronier wins the stage ahead of Fekin and Gemmel, which means that Cronier moves to the top of the standings overall. And Conrad Rotenbach, a very disappointing ninth in stage two. Moving on then to another area of the MTO forest for stage number three, Bierflay, an 18.86 kilometer, pretty much a sprint stage. Yep, starting off with wide open section, fast sweeps, and then tightening up towards the end with some very slippery parts. Sorry, Easy minus left to E, to danger, on to danger. Danger. Yeah, right two. And the bad bump is caution. What else is going to go wrong? Yeah. We don't want to f this bump bumper, then we can't use it. Left six of a bump crest, but we can't stop either. Why can't we? Because he make one down to see us. How far? How far? Four Four grad six. Four grad six. Charles Vulcan saying, what else could go wrong? Well, in fact, I mean, what else could go wrong for this man? Unfortunately, bad luck in the 2011 rally season. And he would lose more than three minutes due to that open bonnet. Jan Habich now currently lying in sixth position overall, 42.1 seconds off the pace, set by Mark Renier. But he's got problems with the car. You know, he could not get the back end around. That means he's probably lost the rear handbrake that they used to get around those hairpins, and that is going to cause him massive problems later on in the stage. Well, if you can't get the rear around, then of course you lose time, and he would only be 12th fastest on that stage. Even though I said it was a sprint stage, you can lose so much time on that. Musa just clipping the outside of that bank there. Wouldn't have lost any time. In fact, it kept him on the rails. Tricky little right-hander there as we go on board with Hachen, Fekin and Pierre Aris currently in third position overall, 23.8 seconds off the pace. Oh. Heavy front end landing there. Looks like he found a kicker when he didn't even know it was there. And they've got to be careful as well. The front end of these cars have the radiator right at the front and it looks like he's caused a lot of damage. Well, it looks like he's going slower there. Let's listen. Yes, indeed. There's a serious problem there for him. As we see, Volra Dippenar at the moment currently in 10th position. And that's a very good showing for the young man again. At the official spectator point, love the way they put them on the 180 turnaround so they can really see how hard these cars brake and accelerate. On board with Hein Latechan and Johan van der currently lying in 12th position overall. As all the drivers were saying, in the open sections, it's perfect to get the car set up. But in the forest, when you get into the muddy, tight sections where the logs are, so hard to find any kind of traction. And John Williams would go seventh fastest in stage three. I did comment it was very technically difficult to get some kind of setup on that car, but it looks like he has found some kind of middle line pace. That's a good demonstration of exactly how you do a handbrake turn around the hairpin as Conrad Rotenbach currently in seventh position, 49.7 seconds off the pace, but he is definitely struggling. He's trying to find some extra pace there. It looks like he couldn't get the power down completely, so he's chasing, trying to stay in the top 10. It's tight. The handbrake hairpin right tight. Uh, oh. No gears. And that's going to lose a lot of time. Janil Tavilla is finding a box full of absolutely nothing, and he has lost time. Janil Tavilla is currently lying in a disappointing ninth position overall, and he would go fifth fastest in the stage. We'll go to Enzo Keen. Let's see how he does the handbrake turn. Perfect. Absolutely perfectly done. Uses the outside bank just to keep himself back on the road there. And if you watch Enzo Kuhn, it's all about smoothness and control. On board with Leroy Polter and Alvin Kutsia. Oh dear, no, no, no. another little mistake for them there. Things have not been going well for them. A stall as well, so he's losing a lot of time. Like I said before, very aggressive driving style from Polter, but he does push hard in the early stages, and that brings out some mistakes. Yeah, but I think on the other hand, that's what impresses so much. So many people in the rallying fraternity, he pushes very, very hard. Still learning, of course, his first full season in S2000. And of course, he won the Sassel Rally earlier this year. And amazingly, he goes third fastest in the stage, despite that little mistake earlier on. So Castro and Toyota are finding some pace. Gimmel also improving on this stage. He would eventually go on to get a second place, but still lose time to Cronier. Johnny Gemmel currently in second position behind Mark Cronier as they come into this stage. The Castrol Toyota Orus. Mm -hmm. And a 22 second gap to make up there to this man, Mark Cronier. He's now starting to slowly but surely stamping his authority on this event. Pushed hard as well on this 18-kilometer uh, stage, clipped a few logs, kept himself on track, but still went on to post a stellar time. In 
indeed. Pronier takes his second consecutive stage victory, 11.1 seconds faster than Johnny Gemmel, but look at the battle for third. Polter and Keen separated by only a tenth of a second. Well, it's been a long run for the first service opportunity. Lots of cars are damaged and uh, they certainly need some TLC, so let's just catch up with the latest. It's been raining quite a bit now in this last stage, so it's pretty very tricky. So now we're reasonably happy with second now, and we're just going to do another one, and we'll see where we are after that. Today's all about a thinking game, isn't it? Uh, it's in incredibly tricky out there. Um, narrow, rocky, muddy, sliding down the hills with no steering. So this is a day to be cautious, to be careful, make sure we're there tomorrow morning. Then we can have a maybe a push tomorrow morning. I've got a nightmare out there for me today. Started off with some cows in the first stage, we had to stop forward. And in the second stage, it seemed like the diff broke. So the car was going sideways all the time. You know, I had no one wheel was spinning up at the back the whole time. So struggling to control the car, and I actually thought the suspension was broken at the back. So I had to do the next stage like that again. And uh, obviously, we looked under the bonnet and we didn't close it properly. So the bonnet flew up halfway through the stage. So, no, all in all, disaster. But uh, yeah, let's, let's try to get to the end and, and see how much points we can get. I think the aim of this event is to stay out of trouble. And we're doing that, although we had two close saves, um, especially in the last stage, we spun without even trying. In a very narrow, slippy section, um, but you need to stay out of trouble on this event. So after three stages of this rally, Mark Cronier and Robin Houghton controlling things nicely at the top of the pile, 33.1 seconds ahead of Gimmel. Third place, though, is on the cards. Polter and Kuhn separated by only four seconds. Conrad Reutenbach in sixth, Herken Fecken retires after stage three, while lying in seventh place, and Volder Dippenar in a very good tenth. So after the teams have had some time to work on the cars, they head out to end off day number one on stage four. Karatara won at 18.22 stage. Car behind the fence this time as we go to Volder Dippenar and Derek Jacobs in tenth position overall, but uh, almost two and a half minutes off the pace. Nicholas Ryan, the privateer's favourite, just says he's in this rally to try and get the job done. We're always tagging him as a top 10 finisher. He's running just outside that right now. 14th to be exact. Shaw Wilkins still struggling. Look at the rear end of that car. Basil Reed Ford uh, Fiesta certainly not handling as he would like it to be. And uh, Wilkin currently five minutes and more off the pace. That's bad job! It was a jump that caused Vulcan problems in the previous stage. Looks like another one again as we go back and pick up on JP Damso, who is building pace as well. He's got a war going with his own teammate, Musa. Team Total, Toyota Oros, currently in 13th position, almost three minutes off the pace as we see uh, Hein Ladegan. Johan van der currently in 11th place, two and a half minutes off the pace. No big spectacle from the Peugeot guys at the moment, but remember, they are running just the one car at this rally now. Mohamed Musa and the team total Tierra Oris currently in a huge battle for 12th position with his teammate uh, JP Damso. Currently about three seconds between the two of them, and this will be a battle royale. Cronier's teammate Williams had all kinds of problems on this stage. The team mister on the screen, breaking five kilometers into the stage. He couldn't see, but his navigator could. Neil de Villiers and Ralph Pitchford in the BP Volkswagen Polo now up into fifth position overall, 1 minute 36.4 off the pace. Left four. Here's the left four. 200. Left four opens over the crest mid. Polter looking to have toned things down a little bit. Just wants to end day number one and stage four with a clean run because he's pushed very hard. Made a couple of mistakes in the early running of today, so he doesn't want any more. Look at those conditions. It's so slippery and rocky also. You must be so careful not to damage your tyres and maybe end up with a puncture. Hubbock had those handbrake problems in stages two and three. The team tried to make a plan for him, but he was still battling with it in this stage and would go on to lose even more time, even though he was pushing hard. He would end up fifth fastest in the stage. Enzo Kuhn in that battle for third position with Leroy Poulter. Currently in uh, fourth position overall. A uh, small little gap, that three second gap that he wants to make up. Kuhn, he's going to be in that battle for the rest of this rally with Polter, so he has to just manage and push where at all possible. But smoothness is what this man is all about. 
In fact, he was so smooth that he set the time faster than Leroy Balde. He went fourth fastest in the stage to move up to third position One overall. Speed. Need turn two left. Need turn two left. 160. Turn one right, loss of a bump. Rotenbach trying to manage this rally now. He's dropped out of the top five. He really needs to end day one on some kind of setting, but he's still battling with those shocks. Absolutely right, Matt. And of course, coming into this uh, rally, leading the South African Rally Championship standings, and he's now fighting for that lead as we go to Johnny Gemmel, who's currently in second position overall, deficit of 33.1 seconds to make up on Cronier. Gemmel's run good the last couple of stages. He's not too far off the pace of Cronier on the standalone stages, but on the list, he keeps dropping back. And in fast right, long, keep fork right. Repeat, keep fork right and a medium right. Our rally leaders, Mark Renier and Robin Houghton, leading by 33.1 seconds. Fitness is coming into play here as well. It's been a lot of long, hard, physical stages, not only for the car, but for the driver and the co-driver as well. Caution, right now, very tight. The second one, yeah, caution. Very tight. And fast left four and slipping. Caution, left 18. Fast left four and slipping. Caution, left 18. So Mark Renier takes his third consecutive stage victory ahead of Johnny Gemmel and Conrad Rotenbach, but now certainly stamping his authority on the Garden Route Rally. In the two-wheel drive championship in Class S1600, Craig Trott leads uh, Guy Bottrell by 10.6 seconds. And Christoph Snyders lies in third. In S1400, Dolph Kussier making a good comeback, leading in his Toyota Taz by 2 minutes, 9.6 seconds over Henk Latergang. The Samoa Golf Estate was where we ended day number one of the rally. It was also Rally HQ. We caught up with the drivers. Conrad, it looks like you've been able to move yourself up here into fifth position now. Not too bad. Yeah, we had a bit of a... I'm not saying issue, but yeah, a little little thing, and we, we managed to sort it out in service. So it's, it's better, but it's just getting in confidence again. You've got quite a comfortable lead going into the overnight stop tonight. Yeah, it's a nice uh, position to be in, especially knowing what's out there. So I think uh, tomorrow, you know, we've got a we've got a bit of a cushion, and uh, we'll play it. But yeah, you know, they can uh, try and come back at me, but I think we've got the pace to be able to control the the race tomorrow. I think it's just for us to uh, put it all together. Unfortunately, on a privateer budget, you you got to keep the car in one piece and take a chance to go off the road and damage the car. I want to finish tomorrow. I mean, we're lying quite well in the overall points classification. I don't want to jeopardise that. It was a bit of a tough start. Um, we lost the handbrake through halfway through stage two, and then stage three was a total disaster in terms of handbrakes because it didn't work properly. Very muddy, we couldn't turn the car. A couple of close calls, made it through the stage, but lost it a lot of time, and uh, tough job ahead. Day one dominated by Mark Rinier and Robin Houghton going to the overnight stop 42.8 seconds ahead of Johnny Gemmel, Andrew Stark, and Zuko and Guy Hodgson in third. Sixth and seventh place is a war for the VW polo battle. Janil de Villiers and Jan Habeck separated by seven seconds heading into day number two and Mohamed Musa cracks his way into the top ten. Join us after the break for action from day two of the Garden Route Rally.